Welcome back to Dream Drop Distance. Don't worry, there's no boss rushes to be found here. Well, I, I just kind of... I kind of did want Riku to get his own boss rush. I didn't want it to be as annoying as the last one. Make no mistake, but still. Joshua. Nice of you to join us. I can sense your fabulousness from far away, Joshua. Let's not go too overboard with the Maximilian Pegasus jokes. <laughs> I just love it, so... Yeah, well, Sora's a little... I like how they basically admit Sora's an idiot. I love that, actually. Now, let's get down to the problem. We've got a nasty dream eater on Oh, like you wouldn't believe. Oh, I have things we'll need to talk about later. It knows how to summon creatures like it. Pretty powerful ones, too. So many pandas in caves, they don't know what to do! <laughs> there was a sale on at the cape store, and they just went nuts. That's right. An exciting view, a traverse town's skyline. He is over fighting the other Traverse town. In fact, Sora is helping them out. And by helping them out, I mean doing all the work for them. And getting his butt kicked when Hakumani pushes him in a corner and beats the shit out of him. I sent Beat and his partner to face it. I'm on it. Riku, there's something else you need to know. It's convoluted and stupid, but you might want in on it. These two Traverse Towns separated by the portal. I was under the impression they were parallel worlds. Oh boy, it begins. It starts. Wrong hell. That's where it gets tricky. After you and Sora left, Shiki crossed the portal to join her game partner. Did you notice players have a mission timer inscribed on their hands? Well, no, because it was only brought up once. It's Sora's run! Than her partner. Nobody's gonna get that. Partner crossed over from the other side. She had less time left. So time flows differently here and there. So is this just like a clock on hand meeting going on here? Do they have a club for this or? Let's all sync up. <laughs> They're all doing commentary and they know our pain. Yes, I understand that. But if these Traverse towns were parallel worlds. And time would blow the same in both. These talking head scenes are really difficult to commentate over. Yeah, that's true, and this is kind of an important plot scene to understand what's really going on later, so... No. Impossible. The worlds are clearly separate. It's not just time... This would be more interesting if they were doing it during a parade. Just, hey Riku, here's something you need to know! Woo, Mardi Gras! Joshua, why are you lifting your shirt? You don't have anything! Don't I, Riku boy? <laughs> oh, I bag on him so much, but I really do like the guy. It's like the same world imagined by two people. What does that tell you? That the world is fan fiction? <laughs> the world ends with you. A dream. Yes. Bravo again, Riku. In which case, none of this may matter one bit to me or my friends. But to you and Sora, I think it might be a vital clue. So I'm now starting to understand the stupidity of right. the thing we are engaged in. Thanks. So you need me in the plaza? Wow, I'm running out of bravos. Well, I'll I right best back. pop down the bravo store. <laughs> Pick up a few more bravos. Exciting talking head commentary. <laughs> Exciting walking to the plaza commentary! <laughs> Fair play, I did cut out most of the backtracking in this, so you won't uh, have to suffer through us going, Oh, there's nothing to talk about here. Look, it's a road! Look, it's a road! There's another road! I think this road was better! I disagree! And look, it's a murder scene! <laughs> I disagree, I think this murder scene wasn't as good as the last. Oh, Blizzard Edge, it has been a while. I never really used the uh, Edge commands, because again, I want my attacks to be fast. You know what's funny? You said the same exact thing when we were in Traverse Town the first time. Well, I think it's important to reiterate that I think it's important to reiterate. Yeah, and uh, to uh, reuse bosses whenever possible. Ah, yes. Don't you guys have a club you could be going to? I mean, you think these guys would want to have a more sociable activity than trying to kill me. All that nightmares, they're trying to give you bad dreams. Well, they could do it at a flea market in a stall like everybody else. I suppose they'd need a vendor's permit or something, you know, in order to be able to sell you these nightmares and bad experiences. 
<laughs> You're not hitting me now. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. God, that's exactly how that fucking fish sounds, I bet. Like, that's not a joke. <laughs> I bet he literally sounds like that. Yeah. Now I've got to make voices for all the Dream Eaters, I hope you realize. I'm the Panda Bear. I'm big and I'm stupid and I'm just... I don't really sound like that. You're making <laughs> fun of me now. I've never said or done any of these things. <laughs> I'm the cat. I think I'm better than you, but actually I have a musical note bouncing around on my butt. And I'm the bat! <laughs> I am the bat, everybody! <laughs> sure could go for espresso! I'm the ram. I'm very important and distinguished, even though my horns look like they could play show tunes. Look out for Yogi Ram's debut album, coming December 2015. Again, to coincide with the last part of the Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough. Don't you think your voices could be a little better? No, Sora, I'm trying. I could do a better Komori Bat in my sleep. Okay, Riku. Okay, just stop it, man. Just stop it now. Exciting backtracking commentary. <laughs> what was your favourite example of backtracking in the Kingdom Hearts universe, Hell Dragon? Was it the entirety of Kingdom Hearts 2? <laughs> Because fuck me, that playthrough was hard to get through sometimes. Yeah, man. I'm just, I mean, I, I don't want to be like, oh, well, commentary is so hard. Give us ad money because it's so hard to get through. No. As you know, um, even though we do like to plan some things out uh, ahead of time, we mostly like to keep it uh, improvisational. Like, if we sat down, we scripted all this, this shit would take forever to get out. But as a result, sometimes we can't really come up with the best things to say on the fly. <laughs> this is why words such as Spallicunt have willed themselves into existence. Yeah, we need, like, dark magic to summon commentary sometimes. And I don't need you! Oh, here we go again. Anybody got a gun, yo? I'm gonna blap blap this sucker in the head. Whoa! Whoa! Good line read! <laughs> I actually really like this scene, because they basically just ignore a fucking spell again and just go off on their own tangent. I actually like it. And you get steadily and steadily you know, more pissed. You always gotta go around and, and garnish my reputation. Yeah, I am a salad, as you know. I believe it was Chekhov that said that. Will you fuck it? You don't know what that means! <laughs> you two are cut from the same cloth. I know. Spell cat's like, what the fuck is this? How dare these little motherfuckers ignore me, the great Spellicad? This is what Spellicad sounds like. All the Dream Eaters need voices now. I do declare. I've got. I say I've got a book on my head. <laughs> I say. I say. I say, gentlemen. Pay attention to me, Spellican. Oh, I'm sorry, gentleman and lady. Me and Rhyme will handle things here. You go after that. Yeah, good luck with that. You got any badges? What's that? No? Well, you fuck them. I think Beach just basically beats the shit out of him with his bare hands. Now, there was a point here where you'd have to run back through the streets, but I cut that out because I'm good guy Anton. Thank you. Could sound a little bit more infused. <laughs> I like how he's like, eh, dinosaurs, I've got it. A pack of rampaging nightmares from before the dawn of time. Eh, ain't no thing. So, no boss, we're just gonna take, oh, well, here's dinosaurs. There's lots of dinosaurs. Yeah, it's kind of intimidating. Speaking of dinosaurs, I finally got a damn dinosaur in a dream drop distance. It wasn't the T-Rex, but it was one of the Triceratops, so I'm gonna have to make do. Uh, I actually uh, build one of these for Riku later in the game. Well, that's good, but I still want my damn T-Rex. Ah, uh, yes, Tyranto Rex. Now, when I die at purple for various reasons, yes. Yes, Yugi Boy. No, no, De uh, Megatron is not <laughs> fucking Pegasus. <laughs> Saratera's pretty cool, though. Yeah, I agree. You know, out of the dream, and considering the dream eaters are mostly useless, he's still one I like. Well, uh, Tyronto Rex, he gets stuff like once more, um, Meteor Strike. Ooh. Really good dream eater to level up, actually. Very nice. I'm definitely gonna get one myself, hopefully. And yes, you will be seeing him later in the playthrough. Delicious. Will you be dying him purple too? No, I never used dies. Yeah, I did, and then the fucking bat got in the way. Got 
Again, he's using flow motion in a cutscene. Wow, I'm surprised. Promote this man. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Next time, spell a can. Next time. I say, I say, I will see you next time, gentlemen. Our business has concluded. <laughs> We've got an ally on the other side. Oh, that reminds me, a Princess and the Frog world would actually be pretty cool in Kingdom Hearts 3, especially with the whole use of colour and whatnot. I'm going to get Keith David into this series one way or another. It doesn't matter if he's Goliath or the Shadow Man, he's getting in. How dare you call me a sponge! I'm not a fan of this remix, to be honest. I think the original was better. Gesundheit. My full name? That's so uncool, man. Hey. <laughs> oh, hold on, I gotta take care of the sky ulcer. Wait, didn't I take care of this earlier? Ah, fuck it. Time to go. So, I guess they go by, they unlock the keyhole, or whatever, and then they just like, do they go up into the keyhole they blow into the sky? That's what happened at the start of the game, you know, on Destiny Island, so I guess that's plausible. Be careful. If this really is a dream, it's going to lie to you to try and make you think it's Maybe like what you're doing now? Yeah. That sounds exactly like something a dream would say. Hey, you can trust me. My shirt is untucked. Wait a minute, I know this is a dream. You guys don't actually have a sequel! Why you gotta hurt me like this, Hell Dragon? Because it's so easy, Tom. Maybe I'll blow a hole in your world next, see how you like that. I would honestly like to see that, because I want to see your method. <laughs> that works for me. I would also have accepted Nerdwell, Scamp, and Troublemaker. Hmm. Hey, can't Goofy just, like, throw his shield like Captain America? Why doesn't he just bean Pete on the side of the face with it? Because that would be too cool for a talking heads cutscene. Of course. This cutscene is such a pointless sidestep in terms of narrative. It's like, you could be back with, you know, the protagonist of the story, but oh no, the Queen's been kidnapped and we have to show you it! Yeah, it doesn't really accomplish anything in the long run. I mean, is is Maleficent even really much of a player at this point in the game? Because Xehanort clearly has taken over in terms of narrative. No, they're fucking Team Rocket in terms of their accomplishments at this point. Which happened when? The 90s. I don't recall Disney Castle ever falling to darkness unless you count the Heartless in the ballroom. Yeah, that didn't really... That was like, oh, well, I have a minor victory. I have won everything. Oh, if you must know, I'm looking for deals and savings. You won't find any in this castle. Huh? You are familiar with Xehanort, the man who led me to discover worlds outside of my own. Ah, uh, yes, that little plot point that was written after Kingdom Hearts 1. Ah, there we go. As do you, I see. Yes, he shared everything with me. And I do mean everything. Oh. <laughs> That's not even cool, man. Gloriously, about the seven hearts of pure light. Oh, yeah, that plot point. Oh, yeah, I forgot when that was important. <laughs> Jesus, Goofy, eat a burger. That's why he wears that armor, so he looks like he can have biceps. Then it came to me. Of course, I could go about conquering other worlds in my own manner. Yes, all of the deals and savings would be mine then. Do you not? And now you will hand it over to me. Yep. The single solitary point of this cutscene is to give you the chronicle for RE Coded. I like how they just gloss over Coded too, basically acknowledging that the game was fucking pointless. Oh, and by the way, if you're expecting Maleficent and Pete to pop up after this cutscene, you're sorely mistaken, my friends. Oh no! How will I go through the rest of Dream Drop <laughs> Distance knowing that my favorite character Pete won't show up anymore? <laughs> I've wanted a boss fight with Pete and maybe Dragon Maleficent for the 50 billionth time. Yes, I truly savor that. And you have to fight them both in the Olympus Coliseum. 
Who could have saved them? No one else in this series uses chakrams. Did somebody order a fan favorite? Oh, Mickey, Minnie. There's two Mickeys on screen. Oh, now it's Minnie. You lose. Damn you! I'll be back for my savings and deals. <laughs> Let it go, Hell Dragon. Just as I do all along. See in two to three years when Namora finally finishes polishing Sora's shoes for HD. You use the darkness to get here? I like how they try to hide who saved them until the last minute, even though we all fucking know who it is. Oh, by the way, while he's wearing that coat, he's immune to darkness infecting his heart, so no, it wasn't risky at all. My name is Lee. Got it memorized? <sighs> we don't need to memorize everything, Lee. We're not as anal retentive as you. Well, some of us may be, but I'm certainly not. What are you trying to say, Heldra? I am employing all <laughs> the things. Everything. I'm employing it all. A chronicle pops up all of the things. <laughs> this is everything Tom is wrong to sin. It's like the Declaration of Independence in a way. Okay, let's equip the Keyblade with which I will uh, be spending most of the game with, uh, apart from the last world, but we'll see that when we see it. Yeah, Knockout Punch is pretty good. You know, good strength, good magic. It's really only topped by, again, you know, one or two uh, Keyblades later, but you'll be using this one for a while, and it's pretty solid. Again, I just never went up a level in these drop bonuses. I don't know why. I'm just stupid, I guess. Man, I realized how important drop bonuses were when I had to go through uh, levels without them. They are supremely important for getting through these worlds intact, so definitely load up. And on that strangely positive note from Helldragon, we're going to leave things here for today. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Bye-bye.